to Let's Talk with Melissa and Paul. You're probably going, oh my God, where you been? Well, we've been here. And I apologize for not communicating since Christmas. Uh, several things has been plaguing us, and I will I will explain. Uh, Christmas Eve, I posted a video um, about my type of Christmas, um, a little history about the true meaning of Christmas, and I wasn't happy. We I kind of showed it with family. I was losing their attention. And I could see why, because I was rambling all over the place. I didn't stick to the subject line. I just like random thoughts. I was watching myself, but it wasn't myself. And I apologize for that. And I removed it. Um, since then, I've been dealing with a lot of issues with me personally. Um, December 28th, I made it to 51. Um, because of my upbringing and my childhood and all that, I've never been looking forward to the holidays like most people. Um, I, um, it's just, being I have a birthday so close to Christmas and then you have a family decided, okay, we're not really going to celebrate your birth, we're just going to make it here's a gift at Christmas, or your Christmas gift as well as your birthday gift. And that troubled me for the longest time. That's another reason why I made a promise to Melissa then with our boys that when their birthdays come around, we make a big deal out of it. And Samuel's birthday is on the 17th of December, and we always try to do something before Christmas for him. So, and then, you know, with Samuel being in his age and all that, you know, we work with him. Okay, what do you want to do? I, you know, what are you looking for? But this past Christmas, COVID restrictions that kind of played a, a damper on things. Didn't do things as well. So, uh, per fat, maybe a, a later time I'll uh, explain why some of the things I had to deal with. Uh, in my own head, as well as other family-related issues. Not specifically calling out my family and all that, but uh, things that caused me to be who I am today. Uh, I appreciate all the questions and people have been emailing where we've been at. Um, we try to record some videos, but we're not successful for one thing or another. Um, and I'll get into that as well. Um, Got my cup of tea. Um, a depression. I, I have a persistent depression disorder. It's a mild but long-term form of depression. Uh, you know, examples. I would lose interest in normal activity, activities, hopefulness. Low self-esteem, low appetite, low energy, sleep changes, and poor concentration. And then on top of that, I've been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder, which is stress that is out of proportion to the impact of the event, inability to set aside a worry or a restlessness. You know, and I've been making some progress um, I believe it was in 2018, this caused me to be hospitalized. Um, I think I was out in the hospital for two weeks, give or take, either way, a few a couple of days or so. Um, and I'll get details later of that in another video as well. I've been wanting to do that. Uh, just trying to build myself up enough to do that. Um, this cold weather, I mean, for a while, we Ohio has been dealing with a mild winter for many years. What we, I consider mild weather because 
you know, I live, grew up in Chicago, and, you know, day one, of, you get snow coming in, cold weather constantly, you know, throughout the, here we get normally one, two days worth of snow, and then it warms back up, and the, or the rain melted, but the last 10 days here, it's been very bitter cold, uh, we're on the cusp of getting out of that. I heard next week we could get up as high as 50, maybe on Thursday. So uh, the cold weather hasn't helped my mood or my body any doing me any favors because the cold air is uh, causing me to be inducing my depression a little bit because of being achiness low, not willing to move, not willing to do the normal things that I want to do at times. Um, so, and I'm hoping in the next few years we'll be uh, in a position to move someplace warmer. So, because I used to love the winter. Now it's just, my body uh, just can't take the stress anymore. Um, one night, uh, Melissa was very sick. Um, she couldn't keep anything down for uh, several days. And, and it was like, I think on day three, she woke me up at two in the morning saying, look, I've been throwing up. I can't, I, I can't sleep. And, and I was so concerned. I was taking her to the ER. I got in the car, brushed off the snow, started it up, warm it all up. Then I got out of the car to come back to the house to help her get to the car because the sidewalk was kind of icy. Um, and on my way to get back to her, I fell on my back. And uh, I'm fine. I didn't have it hurt. But man, I was I was sore for days. Um, I, I could tell right now, you know, at my age, 51, depression, anxiety, I've got diabetes, and my body's taking longer to, to heal up, you know. Signs of getting old, I guess. Um, but because of my depression and that, um, I'm struggling to get through the day some days. Unless I could tell when something's wrong with me. And there's times I'll tell her what's going on, how I'm feeling. And there's times I don't want to say anything. Because in some ways I'm embarrassed because I'm in this position. And some people look at it, well, come on, just snap out of it. You know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. And it takes a little nudging. And sometimes I might come back and say, okay, this is what's wrong with me days later. But not at the time when she's asking. And I know it aggravates the living daylights out of her. Uh, yeah, to do, I have my own chores around the house, and I sometimes struggle to do that. You know, take care of myself, uh, do basic tasks such as, you know, I do my own laundry. I try to keep my own office clean in that. And in fact, I got a pile of clothes that are clean that I haven't folded and put away for two days. And I'm planning on getting that done today after this video, in fact. Uh, for years, therapists tell me depression can cause someone to have low appetite. Well, I wish that was the case for me. Uh, because of my upbringing, I eat. My appetite has been a lot higher than normal. And it, I've been trying to diet and all that, and it, it, this ain't helping me at this point. I mean, I just feel like I want to eat. Um, and that's why I'm so big as I am. And I wish I knew this when I was a kid. But then again, back then, they didn't diagnose things like this. My parents didn't look at me and say, Oh, you may have a disorder. Maybe I should see a doctor. No, it never happened. I struggled through schools um, like crazy. And my parents called me a lazy ass. You need to get down and study, study more. Well, heck, now after dealing with my son, my other uh, youngest... With some of his learning disabilities. I was experiencing that as a kid. And it's like. Ridiculous. I'm, I'm just. 
what I knew now, I wish I knew younger. I think, you know, my life would turn out slightly different, at least mental-wise for me. Um, I really don't know how Melissa gets the strength to put up with me in some days. Uh, I could have a conversation with her, and then all of a sudden, something snaps in my head, and then I'm like in la-la land, and, and it confuses her. Um, but she is my strength. She's been my rock. Um, she, without her, I don't think I could have ma make it as far as I did. Um, I've had uh, an excellent therapy to help me build up what they call tools in my toolbox from in my head to recognize my problems and my struggles to react and do something and part of my therapy work has been with anger management because I tend to get loud and it comes across and I'm angry and maybe I am angry at times but it, a lot of times I'm sitting there like I'm not angry but I'm acting weird and it kind of falls into that category and there's been a few times Melissa has pulled me to the side and said, you know, look, there's a problem. We can't continue like this. You're dragging the family down a little bit. And, and I agree. And I take full responsibility. And so I've been, I admit, I have been struggling since Christmas. Uh, I'm hoping some of the warm weather kind of change things. This COVID thing is not helping me. I've got a good friend of the church. He, um, reached out to me yesterday. How you doing? He suffers the same thing. I kind of talk notes, you know, like, okay, I've been dealing with this. He's like, yeah, I've been dealing with this. I've been, this is how I've been dealing with it. And, but, uh, we were getting together once a month or something like that at the end of the year, but then the holidays came up and he agreed with me that we needed to start that up. So, Again, I'm hoping with the warm weather, uh, I can get out and get on the hiking trail and that, and get out of the house a little bit because I work out of the house. So, um, I have a new therapist. It was dropped on me um, over a week ago that my current therapist for almost two plus years is leaving. <laughs> this particular office to someplace else. So I've been assigned a new therapist. Um, I haven't talked to her, I haven't met. I got a schedule in a couple of weeks. Um, I think I see her, I talked to her online on the, I think the 16th. I think that's when I scheduled it. Oh, excuse me for a second. Sorry about that. So, it, she's kind of new to this particular office. And uh, I've been a little bit more down the last few days uh, because of that. Because it's like starting over. You know, someone else that doesn't know you has, has no inkling of your struggles or what you're doing. And I've made so much, pro I feel I've made so much progress with my previous therapist that now i got to be setting step back, backtracking to get her up to speed of where I'm at. So I'm kind of nervous about that. I might be a little hard on myself with that, but until I talk to her, knowing what her style, how she wants to do things, you know, my previous therapist is, it might be a good thing, it might capture some things that we didn't have captured um so i don't know so that's been in the works the last you know two days um also during the same period i've been drinking a lot more water i've been cut down my soda intake um and then also my sugar intake 
um, something I should have been doing a long time ago. Uh, and granted, the soda that I drink doesn't have any sugar. It's just that, you know, they, doctors always say, you need to cut down your soda, period, regardless if it's caffeine-free or sugar-free. You know, the brand I drink is Kroger. It has no calorie, no sugar. Um, but I've been drinking a lot more water. If I'm not drinking water, it's iced tea, hot tea, uh, a rare cup of coffee. I drink, if I drink coffee, it's a, a cup or two the most, you know, if that. But mostly it's hot tea. Um, and during this period since Christmas, you know, Melissa comes like, well, maybe that's what's doing it out of you. Um, and I, I don't know. It's possible. I mean, she's always right about, you know, some of the stuff that, you know, I'm dealing with. Um, I don't know. It, I need to get back on the treadmill, build up my legs for the, you know, this coming summer. Um, I, feel, I remember the last time when I was on this kick on the uh, low carb and getting on the treadmill and that. And I was doing so well, and I don't know, remember what caused me to stop that routine. You know, I lost a lot of weight back then. I am surprisingly doing quite well on my weight size. I still like to get down another 50 pounds. Uh, I'm just slightly under the 300-pound mark. And, because um, at one point I was 350. So, I... Uh, you know, I'm halfway there to my goal, uh, ultimately. So, uh, again, it's because, you know, you got to get motivated. You got to be able to do this. You know, you know I don't want to use depression as an all hands. Well, this is why I'm not doing certain things. And a lot of it's my own responsibility of, hey, you know what needs to be get done? Get it done. You know, and it's just a matter of just doing it. So, I'm hoping... I, I'll have that turnaround soon. Um, work is fine. I am busy. You know, I work out of my house. I've been working out of my house for over 10 plus years uh, due to the fact that the company, I work for a consulting company and they have contracts with a particular company here in Cincinnati um, and Schenectady and they're kind of a global company. Um, I won't go into the specifics for details for um, auditing purposes. Um, we get these trainings and they, and, you know, for social media, you should not be talking details. So I'm going to avoid talking details about the client. But I'm been super busy lately one because the weather is affecting a lot of systems that we manage also to um, there's been a, a few issues and um, escalations that I've been causing my uh, take up a lot of my time and uh, focus which has been draining a lot of energy out of me and a few days I've been taking naps after my shift and then getting up spend an hour or two with the family and then I'm turning around after you know and that's including dinner in there and then I'm off the bed you know it's like I've been trying to break that cycle because you know I want to spend more time with the family but it, it doesn't help if I go to bed and then I see very le it just reduced the amount of time I can spend with them uh we also, we, I said earlier, we've been trying to produce videos for you and, you know, some hauls and stuff. And, it, and we, we post them and then we come back and I find out, because Melissa will record them and then I'll kind of wrap them up and post them. And then we find out, oh, where's the rest of the video? And that's like, that's all there is. And been having some issues with that you know and trying to figure out okay what's going on 
um, I think I fixed the problem. I had some software installed, and I think it was crashing my um, the software that I used to record these videos. And I upgraded my antivirus as well. Um, that seemed to help. So things seems to be stable. Um, this is the first video after that fix. So, uh, so far so good looking at the clock of how long I've been on the air. So, so hopefully, uh, future videos you'll, um, be able to, uh, enjoy. Um, hopefully we'll get them more out frequent. So, um, Family wise is doing overall is doing well. Um, Melissa and I um, last week was it last week or the week? I think it was the week before. Uh, we went out uh, got new glasses. Uh, I got a single pair. Uh, uh, basically, and I'll get my prescription changed a little bit, so I'm getting a single pair to replace these, and these will be my backup. Uh, for Melissa, I got her three glasses. And people go, three glasses? What? Um, yeah, she got a one of uh, her regular glasses when she's out walking about. Because she can't handle bifocals. And I have bifocals without the line. And it drives her nuts. So she's got one pair of glasses for her every day, her long distance. Uh, the other one's sunglasses, prescription sunglasses. And the other one is reading glasses. Uh, so, because, she, like I said, she can't handle the, um, the bifocals. And they look cute on her. I kind of, the color she picked on for her reading glasses, she had like two or three pairs, and I'm sitting there looking at them, and she's putting them on, and I'm like, uh, Melissa, Elton John called back, he would like to have those glasses back. Kind of funny joke. It, it's just bright colors. She's, I think she got the bright pink, so... When um, they come in, I'll have her um, show you. Will is doing much better. Um, we seem to, with his higher dosage of his seizure medication, it seems like it's under control. Um, as we said before, we purchased a particular watch that would help monitor his controls. Uh, it's been a little frustrating with the watch because a couple of things. The battery doesn't last long. A day and a half, it's got to be charged. I mean, really ties up the battery. The second of all is because he has not had a seizure since we bought the watch. The, the system in the service that we use um, is still trying to detect his normal movements of what they consider a seizure. So we've had several false alerts. And in those false alerts, we, uh, you know, we kind of uh, get on his phone and kind of like, okay, he was dancing, he was brushing his teeth, uh, he was out shoveling snow, and it went off. So the because it's still like a learning curve between us and the service provider, with Will, um, it scares Melissa and Samuel more because, you know, time Samuel's sleeping and everything goes off and then he's having a, a, I wouldn't say a panic attack, but he, that urgency of waking up all of a sudden, you know, and then it turns out it's a false alarm. Um, it's playing with his nerves just a tad, so he's learning how to adjust that. But Samuel's doing quite well. Uh, he's completing his junior uh, high school. He's got uh, 18 of his 20 credits done. So he could, um, you could say he's three quarters of a day next year and then he gets to come home early. Uh, he's finally showing interest that he wants to get out in the workforce. Uh, he picked Kroger. Um, I'm going to be sitting down with him hopefully soon to fill out an application online. Um, he wants to work in that uh, click it area where they he, pick up orders, uh, delivery orders. You know, he goes out and fills those up. 
and you know, or take them out to the car and take them out to the car when they arrive. You know, he wants to do that. He wants to stay busy. Um, he doesn't want to be a bagger because he feels like he's got to be standing. He doesn't want to stand around in the same place and be busy. He wants to be moving around and busy. So I asked him about what about stocking shelves. Well, he's 17. Stocking shelves requires to be 18. It's like, well, I didn't know that, even though I worked at Kroger briefly. But, of course, I wasn't looking for those areas either. So, uh, other things. Uh, I got my list. You know, when I try to produce, another thing that gets frustrated with me is if I don't write down what I want to talk about, I tend to ramble on more and more. So, I'm trying to write down what I want to talk about, what subjects, uh, get certain points. I got bullet points that I, I need to cover. Um, so, one of the um, other bullet points I have is Cynthia Beaumont. Folks, I have not looked at her page since Christmas. With all her Christmas videos that she was producing like a assembly line. I haven't went back. She was stressed. She was not helping my stress levels whatsoever. At, at the at Christmas time. During the month of December. Because all this negativity. You know, I'm estranged from my family. And a lot of it is due to the fact of all the chaos. And, and the negative wasn't helping my situation any better. And with her, it's nothing about that. She uses that to get viewership. Yeah, I heard last I heard, I, I've had some fans come out to me and say, hey, look, you know, she's acting like a nut. She does have her reason. To get a reaction out of us and to try to boost up her viewership. Now, the last set of notes that I did take of her was she accuses people like myself that we're trying to shut her down. And that is so far from the truth whatsoever. You know, and it could be people like us is what causes people to go watch her. But I don't think that her numbers are getting any better of way of subscribing. Because you can watch her stuff and not subscribe. But for myself, no. I, I'm not here to shut her down. All I'm here is to point and review like a reporter. You know? And some of the stuff she does is highly questionable. Some of her e bagging it just... You kind of feel sorry for her. That in her head she feels like she has to do that. And... I don't think she manages things very well. I think she, uh, a few of the YouTube channels that I have been watching, uh, you could tell, like myself, we take notes, we kind of put what we want to talk about, this is what we're going to cover, this is what we observe. Her, I think she just creates the videos, no matter what it is, she talks it off the top of her head, just to get a video out. And to me, okay, if that works for her, fine. But then after a while, you know, it's going to, like, your viewership's going to be like, it's the same old crap. One video after the other. And it's like, why would you continue? The last I heard out of what, she was also dealing with a lawsuit. Uh, apparently doing court, video court. And this person that she is accused of stalking her also had other legal issues in uh, Pennsylvania. I don't know where that stands. I have not follow up on that. You know, I may 
later, um, sometime next month, because really I'm, with Will's situation and some other things we got going on, I'm kind of booked through until I, you know, I like to get Will situated before jumping into that bandwagon again. Um... I don't know. Who knows? I do know that, you know, her wish list, she still wants a PlayStation 5. I can tell you a couple things as our family as a whole. Uh, we went into, uh, this is before Christmas. We went into Half Price Bookstore. Uh, Will, we promised Will. Will loves to go there. I mean, Will gets excited. He builds himself up. He thinks it's the best road trip ever. Um, and he'll say that a lot to even going out to eat and to going to um, Dollar Tree. In fact, we are planning to go to a Dollar Tree. And we try to go to different ones to try to get a different experience. Because the biggest thing we get out of the Dollar Tree halls is, well, I don't see that in my stores. So we try to go to different ones in our area. So... And I haven't decided which Dollar Tree we're going to be going to that we have never been to before. So, uh, so we went into Half Price Books and they had a PlayStation 4, one terabyte. It was a special edition model. And I won't get into the price, but it was priced because of the special edition, it cost a little bit more. Than you, if you went to GameStop and try to buy a PlayStation 4. In fact, nobody has any PlayStation, period. Five, four, three, you could buy a bundle of them. But, you, you know, of course, the graphics and all that compared to the four and five is day and night. So, it was a little bit more than I wanted to spend. And then Samuel talked me into it that he helped paid for it and then I would pay him back. Of getting that. So it's not a Robin to, to Cynthia. But I got a PlayStation 4. And I got some games along with it. That interests me. You know I'm a big sports person. Um, in fact. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. This wasn't planned. Sorry, wasn't planned. So, yeah, this is what I was looking for. Even Melissa, she's a Nintendo girl. She always will be a Nintendo girl. She's got her Nintendo Lite she plays. She's got the Nintendo Switch. Um, and there's games that pop up there that she likes to play. You know, nothing too heavy. Um... But, you know, the cute stuff that she likes into. She's more into the uh, Zelda, uh, Mario, and uh, Harvest Moon type stuff. So, But there was a PlayStation 4 game she was interested in. I went ahead and bought it. It was cheap compared to the, what was on Amazon. I saw it in the store. and We purchased it. Um, and once she got understanding of the controls... It made her laugh. She can't stop laughing. And this is the game. Called Man Eater. I don't know. I'm getting a, a little bit of a glare. Here we go. And this particular game, you're the shark. You got objectives to do destructive things. And, um... And that would made it well worth it. Anything I could do to make her laugh, you know, uh, I try to make a fool of myself just to make her laugh. That makes me happy. But seeing her laughing like that when she played it, uh, it's just relief for me, you know, because, you know, all the stress that even with a normal day stress of, raising a family and all that, and then with my mental issues on adding to that stress, seeing her laugh and be happy, 
is always a blessing for me. So, we did that. And then we, um, I had some extra money. And talking with Melissa, and plus with our poor eyesight, we had about a, what, 35, 45 inch TV. And we, the price was right. We bought... It was last year's model, but the price fit our price range. We bought a 65-inch uh, Samsung uh, smart TV for the family. It's in the living room. The other TV is hanging on the top of the fireplace. It doesn't work. Um, in my home office that I get on mute and have the news on while I'm trying to work. Um, because I do get days that there is particular downtime. And... Um, The sound, the quality, is just day and night compared to what we go through. Um, for a family thing, it was a well investment. So it's not a nudge like, hey, Cynthia, look, I got a PlayStation and a new TV. Yay! And you want people to buy it. Well, that was our priority. You know, it for the COVID-19 and everything else, we treated ourselves. Um... Because we are on Amazon Prime and we have HBO is through Amazon Prime and Cinemax came for free, uh, we get HBO Max automatically. So installing that on the TV and watching brand new movies that come out, another, another way that we use to... That we try, we budget in to help us get through this COVID stuff because we're all confined to the house, uh, ninety nine percent of the time. So we did that, and um, as I said before, I am so can't wait to return back to the wild, hitting the hiking trails. I promised Melissa. And a good friend of mine that I would buy a the proper hiking boots before I hit the trails. Um, so I'm going to get it together with my friend. He knows a good store where he bought his. And we're going to go purchase a pair soon. Um, as you well remember, uh, the end of May of last year... I was on the trail and with my tennis shoes and it was muddy and my ankle went one way my body went the other I can only say that God helped me that day had his angels with me because I could easily broke my ankle instead I tore several ligaments uh, I tore up everything in there um, in your foot is like your finger when the bones can come in and there's a muscle that comes across that attaches that well I tore that I tore a couple of these t uh, muscles going into the toe uh, the ankle support was all ripped up I thought I was going to have surgery uh, the doctor said I, I don't need the surgery um, I was on a boot cast um, normally that ER says, you know, okay, a couple of weeks to a month, you know, but I went to a foot, a foot specialist and he said, based on the MRI, uh, cause they, he had the x-rays and he looked like x-rays don't tell you nothing and something like this. You got to have an MRI. So he had in the MRI and this was like three pages of legal crap. I mean, it was worse than a legal document of naming these muscles that's ripped, torn. You know, that's all I kept hearing. All I heard was ripped, torn on every other word, you know. So he had me on a boot cast for several months. I mean, months. It was try after a while, it was that boot cast was taking a beating because uh, the Velcro on around those boots just slowly coming off. You try to glue them back on and it's like, I don't know. But after that, 
I think it was like September, October, he told me, okay, the boot cast can come off, but then you need to, um, you, you won't need surgery. But it took me another two months to learn how to walk again because the muscles in my ankle just wasn't, didn't know how to operate. And it was still healing, so I promised Melissa that I will go out buy some hiking boots and uh, like I said I have a good friend of the family uh, from our church that can assist me on getting the right boots um, so as it gets warmer the entire family will be going out but for me I'm looking forward to that because I, I take my dogs out there and it just something about that place where we go hiking over at Caesar Creek it just the area is breathtaking um we always take pictures and stuff and uh, I don't know it's just kind of it's like taking a shower all the stress and all that kind of goes away and this our friend of the family you know told us that doing this would do that because it does it for him so it's like okay it's my turn to do this. And uh, I enjoyed it so much that I almost killed myself. Not, not literally, but uh, ripping up my ankle. So, And Melissa doesn't like me going out there by myself. So if, at least if I have my hiking boots, it would be a little less stress for her as well. So... I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover here today. Um, like I said, I apologize that we haven't been producing anything. I think that is behind us now. I think we can get back to a normalcy. Uh, you probably see more videos of myself doing stuff like this. Uh, just talking about how I'm feeling, what I'm doing. Because I'm sure some of you are suffering from depression or high anxiety as well. And just sharing and doing some form of talk therapy will always help. Um, coming up to do this video this morning um, it is frigid outside. I mean, it is cold. and It's somewhat warm in the house. But I was nervous as heck. Just thinking about, okay, what do I want to talk about? Trying to get it down on words so I'm not rambling. And producing something that it's interesting for you to listen. So, I feel better. A little stress is off my back that I was able to do this video. And the software is working the way it is. It's not crushing. So, um, I think we got two points in our column for that. So... I do promise that I, I uh, there was a few questions that people asked about uh, uh, Melissa and I. I will promise I will get that out to you so that, you know, we continue having this conversation going back and forth. So, uh, always remember to stay humble and kind. And let's be careful out there and wear your mask. Thank you very much for your time and, uh, and we'll hopefully we'll talk soon. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk with Melissa and Paul. Take care. Come on, babies. Come on, baby. Look at this big thing of snow. Josie likes eating the snow. She likes it. That's Gunner complaining. He wants out, but I got to keep track of these two. Yeah, yeah, we got to take care of. Look at how well he's doing. He was running too, which. Bless his heart.
since he's got the poor arthritis really bad. Hi, Josie girl, you eating snow? She's a party. She's a party baby. Yeah. She liked her chicken sandwich. Everybody got a chicken sandwich today. I mean, look at it. You can tell how deep the snow is. It's almost up to the top of his leg. Samson! Samson! Don't overdo it, sweet baby. But he was feeling better, you could tell. They all got a nice hot sandwich in their belly. I like bringing them treats. I like bringing They're like my babies too. Yeah, they are. They're like my babies too. <laughs> He's sticking his nose down in that snow. Samson! If you have enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest context. And check out the other great clips on Let's Talk with Melissa and Paul on the YouTube network. Thank you.